Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. And follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. In a moment, we're going to get into t- today's episode after a word from our sponsor, Today's program is Not Beat. The original air date, April the 10th, 1950. And the title is, I Know Your Secret. Before the show starts, I want to let you know about an offer from our sponsor, Audible.com. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audible.com slash try now to browse through their amazing and ever-expanding catalog of audiobooks and audio programs. This month, I'm recommending The Labors of Hercules by the great Agatha Christie. The plot is that Poirot, having been challenged by a physician, sets out to best his namesake and carry out his own 12 labors of Hercules before he retires. This is one of my all-time favorite detective short story collections. Christie sets out to give Poirot a mystery to solve that evokes the uh, mythical adventures of Hercules in a clever and interesting way. These stories are highly creative and often have a strong comedic angle. In my opinion, the TV adaptation, which lumped them all together like it was some novel, kind of missed out the best way to experience this is this uh, audiobook read by Hugh Fraser, a great British actor who played Hastings in the Poirot TV series. However, you can choose any audiobook that Audible offers for your free trial. Just go to audible.com slash try now to start your subscription today. Night. Hi, this is Randy Stone. I cover the night beat for the Chicago Star. Stories start in many different ways. This one started with a secret. A secret that ended with the river. Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. To most people, nightlife in Chicago means slumming in the honky-tonks, a fast tour of the taverns, or a ringside table at the Chez Paris. To me, it's more than that. Nightlife is made up of the stories that happen in the lives of ordinary people that wouldn't happen in the light of day, and I've got headlines to prove it. It's the time when darkness can hide the ugliness of dirt and misery, or the gloom can make it worse. Those same shadows that are a big help to Cupid can be a cover for crime. And some little thing that today caused fear, tonight can build into despair. This was a night for driving, cool and clear with a suggestion of spring. It was dusk when I started, what I intended to be a short drive, but it was late when I turned back to town. I hadn't spotted a story and none had caught up with me. At Oak Street Beach, where Lakeshore Drive turns and Michigan Avenue begins, I quit kidding myself that I could find the story on wheels and headed for the paper to park my car. I was just approaching the bridge when I saw the girl. Standing on the rail, her arms held rigid at her sides. I jammed the brakes and stopped within 20 feet of where she stood. And then, as I opened the door, she jumped. Hey! I ran to the rail and vaulted over into the icy river. The girl was nowhere in sight. Hello! And then she came up so close that her shoulder brushed against me. I grabbed her and started for the bank. Let me alone. Let me alone. Look, lady, let's get out of the water. Let me alone, please. Please let me alone. You know what they teach in life-saving? If the victim resists, I don't want it to get rougher. Come on. No. No. A little farther. A little more. 
Climb up. Oh. Climb up. Well, there, that's better. Why did you do it? Why did you do it? They know. They know what? What are you talking about? They know my secret. They know my secret. Now you can tell me about it in the car. It looks like I'm going your way. We stumbled up the bank and under the bridge. People were starting to gather at the rail. I put the girl in the front seat of my car and I pulled away fast. I hate a curious man. The girl huddled over against the door, shivering. She didn't make a sound until we crossed the bridge. And she began to cry. <laughs> Want to tell me about it? All right, you've been a hero. Why don't you let me alone? Look, I'm only trying to make it easier for you. Strangely enough, when you try to take your own life, it becomes a matter for the police. Oh, no. Does that frighten you? I don't want to see the police. And they want to see you? Why don't you mind your own business and leave me alone? I want to help you. No one can help me. No one. Nothing's ever that bad. Just seems like it. That's easy to say about somebody else. Well, I know it wasn't very original, but neither is jumping off a bridge. Are... Are you a detective? No, no. I'm just a guy. Why did you go in after me? Oh, I saw you jump just as I drove up. Reflex, maybe. I was in the water before I had time to think. I guess I do owe you something. Well, now that's more like it. I'll settle for a cup of hot coffee and some dry clothes. I can make the coffee. I don't know about the dry clothes. Maybe the janitor can find you some. <laughs> it's quite a trade. A cup of coffee for my life. One of us is getting chipped. She talked after that, and I could tell it was to keep me from asking questions. I couldn't make her out. If she was still angry, she didn't show it. It was a reaction I'd never seen before. She wasn't happy or unhappy. It seemed more that... Well, did you ever see anyone who was resigned to living? I drove to the address she gave me on Walton Street. It was a better-than-average apartment house, a good district. No clues there to suicide. She even joked a little as we reached the front door. Sorry, I must have left my bag in the river. Oh, the, the janitor will let us in. Must be pretty exclusive here. Hmm? If I hadn't noticed it, why do you say that? Only three names in all those letterboxes. Well, that's all there are. Wanda Rhodes, that's me, and, and Miss Henrietta Dietz. Etta lives across the hall. And Judson. He died seven months ago. Then there are only two people living in this big building? Well, there's the manager, but he's hardly ever here. And the janitor, why? Well, maybe you haven't heard there's a housing shortage in Chicago. Don't tell me the house is haunted. No. No, I guess not. I don't get it. What do you want? Oh, let us in, Lucky. I lost my key. What happened to you, Miss Rhodes? You're all wet. Oh, she had an accident. She was walking on the pier and she slipped. Oh, uh, this is... Randy Stone. Uh, yes, he helped me out. Could you find Mr. Stone some other clothes? I need something dry to wear home. I'll bring them back. I don't know. Well, anything will do as long as it's dry. Here's a deposit. When I return your clothes, you can keep it as rent. Well, all right. Walking on piers at night, bringing home strange men, borrowing clothes. <laughs> Are you feeling better? I'm beginning to, Mr. Stone. Randy, hmm? All right, Randy. Let's get that coffee, huh? Oh, all the comforts of home. What is it, Wanda? What is it? Look, in lipstick on the mirror. I know you're sick. Oh, it's there again. All right, easy, baby, easy. Sit down here with your back to it. That's better. Now, what's it all about? I... I can't tell you everything. Well, tell me what you can. It'll do you good. Oh, all right, I'll try. At, at first, it, it was typewritten notes. What do they say? That... I know your secret? Yes. Go on. The first one was yesterday. No, no, the day before. It, it was slipped under the door. It wasn't signed, of course. Oh, no, none of them were. How many notes have you had? I don't know. They, they were everywhere under the door in my mailbox. I even found one in the laundry. Say anything about it to anyone? Oh, no. Not... Not to you. Oh, you. You don't understand. Yeah, I think I understand. Who else knows about this uh, secret? No one. No one here in Chicago. What else happened other than the notes? There were the sounds. But I, I can't be sure about that. What sounds? I may have imagined it. The, 
notes got on my nerves, I guess. I, I began to hear things, you know, boards creaking, footsteps. I I'd hear something outside in the hall. When I'd open the door, that there'd be nothing there. Imagination can do strange things. I, I tried going out to get it off my mind, but that made it worse. I dreaded coming home. I knew what I'd find. You let those notes drive you... Then to... there was the phone. There was no mistake about that. That began late this afternoon. Hello? 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 Hmm. Hello? Hello? Hello, who is this? Head off. <sighs> Hello. Hello. <clears throat> Look, what are you trying to do? I'll fix you. I'll leave the receiver off the hook. There. That'll settle that. <clears throat> All the crazy things. Well, ring, go ahead. See if you can ring now. Oh. Hello. This is the service operator. Is your receiver off the hook? Well, yes. Are you using this line? Well, no, but you see... Then I must ask you to hang up your receiver. Uh, operator, let me explain. M my phone keeps ringing. When I answer, there's no one there. There is a party waiting for your line. Well, I is it a man or a woman? I'm sorry, we cannot give out that information. Will you please replace your receiver and see if your number can be dialed? Oh, all right. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Oh. Number, please. Oh, I, I want the service operator, please. I will ring the service department. I am ringing. Service operator? Oh, operator, something has got to be done about this phone. What is your trouble, madam? Well, I just talked to you. You made me hang up my receiver. Oh, well, that must have been another operator. If you'll tell me your trouble, I will have it checked. Look, my, my, my phone keeps ringing and ringing and ringing, and, and when I answer it, there's no one there. I, I can't stand it. My nerves are shot as it is. I, I can't stand it, I tell you. Well, the trouble may be in your phone. Well, of course it's in my phone. That's what I'm trying to tell you. If the trouble is in the instrument, it cannot be checked until Morning? Morning? Well, what am I supposed to do until then? I can't stand here and listen to this thing ring all night. We will send a service man as soon as we can. Yes, yes, you just do that. But until he gets here, this receiver stays off the hook. I'm sorry, madam, you cannot do that. Why not? You just see if you can stop me. I'm sorry, madam, you cannot do that. Who does she think she is? Oh, hello. This is the service operator. What do you want now? Is your receiver off the hook? Yes, my receiver is off the hook. You know it is. I told you I was going to leave my receiver off, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm sorry you cannot do that. Can I? Well, who's going to stop me, I'd like to know. Your number is on a four-party line. When your receiver is up, it stops the service on all the lines. I must insist that you replace your receiver. And what will you do if I don't? It's my duty to see that the lines are open. I will have to keep ringing until you do. Oh! <laughs> Hello! 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 Oh. The phone kept ringing and ringing until I guess I went a little crazy. I grabbed my coat and ran down the hall. When I got to the front door, I found a note pasted on the glass. I know your secrets. <laughs> I, I don't know just what happened after that. I, I remember running and that cold water. Is there someone who would really want to harm you? Yes. Uh, uh, I don't know. All right, we'll see. 
You should be getting out of those wet clothes. Come on now, find something warm and dry. Oh, what about you? Well, oh, does that answer your question? I think that's my tailor now. Now go in and change and knock before you come back. Oh. Yeah, just like that. Oh. Oh. Here's some clothes. Oh, you must be the man from Sears. Hmm? Oh. What's that? It's something you can do for me, Pop. My name's... They call me Lucky. What is it you want? I want the names and present addresses of some of the tenants who used to live here. What do you want that for? I want to ask them why they moved from here. What business is it of yours? It's not. I'm just curious. Oh, uh, that ain't in my department. Uh-huh. Will this uh, help you find that information? Uh, sure easy with your money, ain't you? But put it away. It won't do you no good. First place, I don't know where they moved. Second place, I can tell you why. I go myself and I had any place to move. Well, why did they move? Because this is a crazy house, that's why. People walking around all hours, a peeping and a prying. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be meaning that for me, would you? No, no, for you. Wandering all over they was. Top floor, this floor, even in the basement. I saw them a looking and a searching. Searching for what? I ain't a saying. Now, tell me what you mean, Pop. Uh, Lucky, you can tell me about it. There ain't nothing more I'm going to say except in this. Just heed, mister. You don't get in somewhere you can't get out of alive. You are listening to Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. I stood in a strange apartment, wringing wet with an armful of shabby, faded clothes and a door slammed in my face. Well, I wonder what that was all about. Must be as nutty as a candy bar. Just heed, mister, you don't... Yeah! Can I come in now? Oh, not yet. Has Lucky gone yet? Yeah. And who are you talking to? Oh, myself. It's getting me, too. Okay, come on in. What's getting you to, Randy? This house. Next, I'll be hearing things. You don't believe me? Oh, sure, sure. I believe most of it happened. The rest was the product of fear and panic. What about this, this uh, Henrietta, what's her name? Etta? What about her? Think she'd know anything? If she doesn't, it's not her fault. She tries to keep an eye on everything. Well, maybe I should get my stories from her. That's a gal I want to see. Come on. Not me. I wouldn't be caught dead. <gasps> yeah. All right, you make some coffee. I'll be back. I stepped across the hall, rang the buzzer. There was no answer. I rang again several times. I knocked, and I waited. And then I heard it. it. sounded like someone in trouble, someone moaning. I put my shoulder to the door. At the same time, I tried the knob. The door opened to my touch, and I almost fell into the room. There in the center of the floor swayed a little white-haired lady, and she was singing. In her hand, she held a typewritten note. When she saw me, she smiled pleasantly. Hello? I'm sorry to break in like this. I, I rang. Well, come in. I see you got a note, too. What? That note. Uh, oh, this. Oh, yes, isn't it exciting? Here, see? I know your secret. What? I know your secret. Speak up, young man. Don't be afraid of me. I know your secret. Oh, you do? <laughs> then you must be the one who sent this. Do you have one? Oh, dear. Just a minute while I fasten my aid. Now, uh, what did you say? Do you have one? You needn't shout, young man. I can hear perfectly well. Now, what is it you want to borrow? Do I have one what? Do you have a secret? <laughs> a secret? I thought you said you knew. All right, look, let's, uh, let's start over. Now, I walked in. You were holding a typewritten note in your hand which said, I know your secret. I read the note. I did not send it. That clear? Why, yes, it seems so to me. Uh, what is it you don't understand? Miss, uh... Dietz. Miss Dietz, do you have a secret? <laughs> Young man, I am 60. Uh, that is, 58. I taught school for more than 25 years. I am not deformed nor disfigured. There are those who even call me attractive. <laughs> is it so hard to believe that at some time in my life there has occurred one event that could be called my secret? Well, has there... Not that I can think of. Oh, I should have known better. All right, thank you, Miss Dietz. I'm afraid you can't help me after all. Well, try. Ask me something. Anything. All right, okay, okay. Yes. Once, once more. <laughs> what can you tell me about the tenants who were here, the last ones to move? Oh, I can tell you plenty. 
Now, there was that Mr. Taylor. He was a traveling man, and you know how traveling men are. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then there was that Mrs. May. That one, she spent a fortune on psychiatrists, but that didn't keep her from drinking alone. <laughs> you know, she would draw the shades. She said it was her eyes. <laughs> and she would come out for three or four days. <laughs> uh, do you know why they moved? No, I don't. I know where they moved, though. Yes, I, I have it uh, right here. <laughs> there, here you are. Thank you, yes, thank you. Now, let me tell you about no, that. No, 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 thank you, Miss Deeds. I know and I've had enough. Wanda had coffee made when I got back to her apartment. It was strong and hot. Wanda sipped and watched me. I drank one cup and I started on another. See her? Yeah, yeah. Why didn't you tell me? I tried to. I feel like I'm playing hopscotch. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Oh, this, this whole thing is out of my line. I'm pulling out of it. Oh, well, that's just dense. Oh, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is a matter for the police. I don't want the police to know anything about it. And I say that they should. If you've committed a crime and you're hiding, go to them and get it over. If not, they have detectives who can clear this up. No. I, I haven't broken any law. But there'd be publicity. I've seen it happen before. Pictures, names in the papers. Okay, okay, all right. It's your ball game. We'll play your rules. I'll go see what I can find out from the ones that moved. You are going to help me? Sure, baby, sure. Promise me you'll stay right here, hmm? Oh, I won't try it again. Once was enough. <laughs> I started with the nearest ex-tenant, Mr. Taylor. He answered my second ring. He was wearing pajamas and street shoes. His body was moving, but his mind wasn't. Yeah, uh, what do you want? Mr. Taylor? Uh, yeah, I'm Taylor. May I come in? Oh, sure, come in. Well, what do you want? I want to ask you about the Walton apartments. Wal Walton? Who are you? Why did you leave the Walton apartments, Mr. Taylor? What are you getting at? Did you receive threatening notes? Yeah, typewritten. What do you know about them? Was that why you left? Because someone knew too much? Take off, mister. I'm not buying. Were there phone calls, too? Calls when no one answered? You don't know when to quit, do you? First notes, then phone calls, now in person. So you're the one. The one what? The one that drove you out? Proud of that, aren't you? You're pretty busy with that typewriter and that phone. Well, now I'll take my turn. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You got that wrong. Oh, you're the one that got it wrong, mister. I shouldn't have moved in the first place. I didn't write those notes. Yeah, I suppose somebody sent you. Well, I don't care which way it is. I got a message you can return. Now, listen to I me. I listened long enough. I listened to that telephone, remember? I did not do... You want to back out. Should have thought of that before you rang my bell in the middle of the night. I'm trying to help. Help? Oh, that's a new one. I don't know what you want, but this is what you're going to get. <laughs> Will you let me explain? Sure. Come back any time. We'll talk about secrets. <laughs> For a traveling man, Taylor had a good right. I don't know what he sold, but it must have been heavy, for his arm was in good condition. When I came to, I was lying in the hall in front of his door like a watchdog. I was convinced that Taylor was not interested in my explanations, so I went to see Mrs. May. I knocked several times at her door before it opened a little way. She looked at me and started to close the door again. I stopped her with my foot. She was in cream and curlers. I could have chinned myself on her breath. What do you want? I want to talk to you about the Walton apartments. I don't know anything about them. Who are you? I'm a reporter, Chicago Star. No, oh, I don't know you. You get out before I call the police. I wouldn't do that, Mrs. May. Why? The Walton apartments, remember? The Walton apartments. Why did you move? There's no law against it. What business is that of a reporter? Did you ever receive threatening notes or phone calls? No, oh, I... I just wanted to move. That's all. So I did. Mrs. May, I know your secret. Oh, you. You're the one that sent those notes. You're the one that rang me all day and all night. What do you want with me? You can't blackmail me. I'll go to the police. I'll put a stop to this. Yeah, I'll put a stop to this. So you did receive typewritten <laughs> notes. Papers, man, not the papers. I'll do anything, anything you say, but don't print anything in the papers. What do you want? Mrs. May, I I'll want... I'll anything, anything. Only don't tell my secret. And all the time, I thought it was her. She watched me all the time. I was ashamed of what I'd done, but it was the quickest way, and there wasn't much time. I apologized for the ruse and the shock it had given her. When her alcoholic brain finally understood what I was saying, she turned her back and started for a tray of bottles on the table. I used her phone and called Wanda. No, 
No, don't call anymore. Wanda. I'll do anything, but only please don't call anymore. Wanda, Wanda, it's Randy Stone. Everything's all right. I'll be right over. Mrs. May didn't hear me when I left. Wanda was near collapse when I reached her apartment. Her phone had rung almost constantly since I left there, and it was still ringing. Randy, that phone is driving me crazy. All right, let it ring. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. i got to get out of here. Then maybe that would be better. I'll take you to a hotel. You can stay there the rest of the night. Pick up your things no, tomorrow. No, no, I've got to get out of this house. I won't live here with just a loony old woman and a snooping janitor. Okay, baby, okay. I'll ring for your trunks. Oh, the, the, the house phone? Use, use the house phone over there. Okay. Do I press a button? No, no, just lip receiver up. He'll answer. I guess he isn't there. I... Oh, Pop, it's Randy Stone. I'm in Miss Rhodes' apartment. Will you bring up her trunk? She's moving out tonight. Okay, Lucky. That phone! That phone, I can't stand it. I've got to answer it, Randy. I've got... It stopped. Randy, it stopped. Yeah. It nearly had me stopped. Sometimes you look right at a thing and you never see it. It was there from the very beginning, but it was too easy and I refused to see it. I met Lucky at the door and helped him carry the trunk into Wanda's apartment. And I closed the door behind us. What's that for? Why'd you shut the door? There's another trunk out there. We won't be needing it, Lucky. But you said... She's that... changed her mind. She's not leaving tonight. But, but you say, said she was moving. Why do you want to drive the tenants to move? I don't do nothing. It was them. The, the people around at all hours uh, peeping and prying. Are you hiding something, Lucky? You. You've been snooping too, just like the others. I saw them down there, and you too, Miss Rhodes, trying to find out where I hid it. I don't know what you mean. Ah, you can't fool me. You found out about it. I saw you snooping in the basement, pretending you was doing your laundry. I know you want to steal it from me. I've never stolen anything in my life. I don't know what you're talking about. What did you steal, Lucky? What did you steal and hide in the basement? I didn't steal it. I found it. Found it? Well, it was the same thing as finding it. It was in that suitcase Mr. Judson stored here when he came back from the war. It was loot. It weren't his. He stole it. I didn't. What was it, Lucky? A bag of jewels. A plain old canvas bag of jewels. Oh, they were so pretty. I never had nothing so pretty before. If you took them from his case, that's stealing. But I didn't. The case got knocked off in the basement and come open. He, he never come back. He was killed in that plane crash. That makes it mine. Now, don't it? The same as I find it. You were the one that was phoning me? Sure. I knew if I could scare you off, you'd quit snooping. And I would have, too, if that nosy newspaper guy hadn't butted in. But how did you know about my secret? Uh, I didn't. Then why did you type those notes? I knew you had a secret. Everybody has one. And if you thought I knew about it, you wouldn't tell about me. You didn't know anything about Wanda? No. When I tried the first time, the people moved. And that gave me the idea, so I've been doing it ever since. Lucky. That's what they call me, Lucky. And now your luck has run up. No, it ain't. This was in the bag, too. A gun? Yes, Miss Nose, your loaded gun. Hey, what's that? It's the phone. I'll take care of that gun now. Oh, no, no, not again. It's all right, baby. I'll answer. Hello? We have been able to check your line. We cannot locate your trouble. Oh, yes. Uh, thanks a lot, operator. You can cancel the complaint. We've located the trouble right here. Oh, an operator. Get me the police. Well, there it is. The story of what can happen when guilt starts eating a man's insides. He didn't intend to hurt all those people, but he did. He just happened to hit a sore spot they all had. And Wanda's secret was something very small, but she'd made it important. That's not so hard to do. You can hold a dime in front of your eye and black out a whole city. Pretty good writer once wrote, Thus doth our conscience make cowards of us all. <laughs> yeah, I guess everybody has a secret, something they'd rather nobody else knew. That is, everybody except you and me. <laughs> yeah... Copy, boy. Night Beat, a new dramatic series, stars Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. Tonight's script was written by Joel Hunt. Night Beat is edited by Larry Marcus and directed by Warren Lewis. Music is by Frank Worth. The part of Wanda was played by Joan Banks. 
Others in tonight's cast were Jeff Corey, Martha Wentworth, Betty Lou Gerson, Colleen Collins, and Will Wright. Frank Lovejoy will next be seen in Milton Sperling's production, Rock Bottom, released by Warner Brothers. Listen next week at this same time and every week as Randy Stone searches through the city for the strange stories waiting for him in the darkness. The stories that come out of the shadows to find their way into Night Beat. Richard Diamond, private detective, is now heard on Wednesdays. Yes, now on Wednesdays, hear Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. You'll hear action-packed entertainment as glib Rick Diamond fights his way to fame, fortune, and a red-headed girlfriend over most of these NBC stations. For a hundred a day in expenses, Richard Diamond tackles adventure that will hold your interest right up to the smashing climax. Be sure to tune for the thrill-packed action drama that is yours for the listening every Wednesday on Richard Diamond, private detective. Now on Wednesday night, NBC brings you a trio of great adventure and mystery shows. Mr. District Attorney, The Big Story, and Richard Diamond. Hear them all Wednesday night on NBC. Now it's Brian Donlevy and Dangerous Assignment on NBC. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surfer series. Oh, and a man's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. Well, this was a great psychological story, and it had a very simple solution once you found it out. But like Randy said, you expected it to be more than that. And particularly when you're listening to this uh, as an old-time radio fan, you don't really expect that a crime like this, that the perpetrator is going to be the maintenance man, particularly for the reason stated. And the reason is really clever that he has a secret, and he doesn't know anybody else's secret, but he's... Uh, saying that to frighten them off from the uh, apartments. Now we turn to listener comments and feedback, and these were posted in regards to episode 2079. Uh, Francis says, a bril uh, brilliant series, well-written and super uh, superbly acted. I have two uh, particularly favorite stories, The Black Cat and The Smell of Peaches. Um, Francis, I have not actually heard either of those yet, so, uh, I will be very, uh, intrigued to, uh, actually, uh, get to listen to them. Um, that is the one good thing is I've heard, uh, I think maybe about a third of the circulating episodes and saving them, uh, for when we go through there, I get to hear a lot of these really fine episodes for the first time. Uh, Michael, uh, says, uh, Frank, uh, Lovejoy was the ace. God bless him always. All right, well, that will actually do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow as we get started with Hollywood Mystery Time. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become